Uh, Dr. Bhuva Narayan here today. Um, thanks for joining us, Bhuva. Thank you I for inviting me. I just wanted to ask you um, about, um, you did a talk yesterday about cyberbullying. Yes. And I wanted to ask you about the environment in which twins and teens are in, you know, what the current environment is at the moment. Sure. Um, I'm from the University of Technology, Sydney, and I did this study with the help of the ODA Foundation grant. And what we did was we had a database of uh, actual interactions from various social media sites where people comment and exchange information. And a lot of that was from worldwide data from um, various different social media sites. Uh, so those, it was actually existing data, not live data that was observed. And uh, I created a software where people could, uh, librarians, researchers, academics, parents, uh, school teachers could actually look at the data and code it to see who was, uh, you know, what was the language that bullies use, um, what kind of language do victims use, and what are the other roles in cyberbullying. Um, there's obviously uh, people who bully, people who are bullied, people who bully for various different reasons. There are some bullies who feel like they are entitlement bullies that they feel somehow superior to others and so they bully. Uh, and uh, there's also bystanders, bystanders who intervene, bystanders who are silent, who watch, uh, and there are other bystanders who actually speak up and try to intervene in a bullying episode online. And often these uh, upstanders, as I call them, the pro-social bystanders, uh, bystanders they get bullied themselves um, so often they you know there might be one small message sent by somebody and they may be out of the picture altogether and then but that message has spread and maybe you know the the sort of the wrath goes on to the uh, upstander who actually speaks up and then so it shifts so in a way even though a person may not be bullying another person continually, just one comment or one uh, sentence can be picked up by other people mm -hmm. and spread through the system. And that happens a lot. The thing yes. is that uh, they, the sh roles shift easily, like people who have been bullies, has, sorry, have been victims, mm -hmm. always turn into bullies, especially as I'm looking at data from tweens and teens. So if you have been bullied between 8 and 10 years old or 10 and 12 years old, as you become a teenager, you turn into a bully without even knowing that you're doing that mm -hmm. because it's sort of, th there's a fine line between resilience, like building resilience in children and also um, normalizing that behavior. Yeah. Often teenagers begin to think that it's a rite of passage, they feel proud that they have survived the bullying and that they can somehow perpetrate it and replicate it yeah. and somehow that it's a rite of passage to become a teenager or an adult. Uh, also they do see bullying behavior in um, media, adults indulging in it, mm -hmm. whether it's cyber racism or cyber bullying or bullying of women or or other minorities, they know that this is how the world operates and they seem to replicate it. Young people already feel like alienated and marginalized, irrespective of what community they come from. Uh, and they're doubly marginalized if they belong to a marginalized community in many ways. Uh, so the adults, in the way that we engage with media, in the cyberspace and social media, definitely we model behaviors for teenagers and youngsters. So they do learn. But at the same time, youngsters develop their own language, which is uh, which excludes adults. So in many of one of the, my biggest challenges in coding this data, uh, text data, was that they are talking in. English, I mean, they're writing in English but you cannot understand a yeah. word of it because it's acronyms, that slang, and the slang and the acronyms develop quickly, every day. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, adults, many adults find it hard to quote the data. Mm -hmm. They said, I don't understand what this is, you know. So we provided them the Urban Dictionary online to look yes. up the word, but not everything is there. Um, they, uh, children have a way of talking to each other, like, 
if if a ch if your child is typing M O W, uh, you know, mother M O S, mother over shoulder. So they are like, you know, even if you're actually watching your child interacting online, you wouldn't understand a thing. You would think it's harmless. Uh, yeah, exactly. So that was one of the biggest challenges in sort of coding this data. And I think, uh, and, and eventually my aim is to develop a software that sort of uh, uses machine learning to understand what's going on and then picking up patterns in the language and alerting your parents or school teachers because often uh, children under 18 are using Wi-Fi or you know home servers and so on so you can install the software on the server mm -hmm. whether it's a school server or the library server or home server and it, it, without identifying the child it picks up language and says there's something going on and then if you want to find out who the child is you can and then talk to the child to say do you want to talk to your parents or, you know it's it's a way to start a conversation rather than penalize the child because most children don't report bullying at all especially cyberbullying to parents because the first thing the parents do is take away their devices yeah. or uh, just you know bar them from the internet and